Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And we're just a death-defying couple in love Ooh. that loves reacting to some death battle. I like what he did there. <laughs> yeah, switch it up on you a little bit. He did. Happy Fight Night Friday, everybody. Fight Night Friday. Yeah, this is something that we do. Uh, we started over on Definitely Not Definitive Games channel. We do it on our Instagram. And now we're going to carry it over onto this channel as well. We're going to do a Fight Night Friday. So, uh, you know, have a little bit of a theme going on here. Because you can't get enough Fight Night Friday. Yeah, you can't get enough Fight Night Friday. It's all good. And so we're doing a death battle. It's uh, Goku versus Superman. Um, we don't know a lot about Dragon Ball, uh, so we wanted to learn a little bit more about it um, as we get into it more, and we were reacting to all the uh, finishers um, in uh, Dragon Ball Fighters on the other channel, Definitely Not Definitive Games. I don't know any anything really about Goku, so my money's on Superman, just right out the gate, but... Yeah, I mean, just because I don't know anything about Goku either. I, think <laughs> I feel like that's going to be challenged. So we had a great suggestion from our community, and yeah. to, uh, after we learn about, a little bit about Superman and Goku, to then give... Who we think is going to win and why? Okay. Right before the right before the battle. So great suggestion as always from the community, and thank you all so much. And if you want more death battle reactions from us, we got a playlist down there in the you know description of the video. Yeah. It's down there. Born to dying races and sent to brave new worlds, these two alien saviors are legendary. And everybody wants to know who would kick whose ass in a fight. <laughs> and I mean everyone. Goku, the tenacious Super Saiyan. And Superman, the Man of Steel. To ensure no questions are left unanswered, we will be acknowledging every official resource for both combatants. Hmm. Though the original writings hold precedence, no mistranslations allowed. Also, as he was retconned and rebuilt in 1986, we will be examining the modern Superman. Considering Supes pre-86 could make up new superpowers on the fly and destroy <laughs> entire solar systems by sneezing, probably a good idea. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. I didn't realize Superman was so, like, overpowerful in 486. Yes, so. Oh, wow. They contacted a lot of different sites. Yeah, they did. They did their research. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just <laughs> some random guy. Wow. They really built this one up. Mm hmm. Kakarot was born to a low-class Saiyan warrior on the planet Vegeta. He narrowly escaped the extinction of his entire race when he was sent to Earth with a single, simple mission. Oh. Destroy everything! Then he conveniently bumped his head and forgot about it all! Oh. Loved Goku by his adoptive grandfather, his life revolves around combat. He cares little for anything else, unless food is involved. Can I have another bowl, please? <laughs> At 12 years old, he was trained by Master Roshi in Kame Sen and Ryu, which pushes a person to superhuman levels. Complementing his Saiyan biology, Goku's superhuman strength, speed, and senses skyrocketed. He developed numerous fighting techniques, including the fast-moving after image and the dragon throw, his trademark grapple. At 15, he was already so powerful that the only worthy teachers left were gods and a talking cat, but mostly gods! <laughs> he was only a kid and his power level was already enormous. It's over 9,000! Not yet! Okay, now it is. What? 9,000? False! In the Japanese manga, Goku's power level at that time was 8,000. But it doesn't even matter because power levels are absurd. The entire point of introducing them was to show how unreliable and meaningless they were. By relying on power levels, the villains constantly underestimated the heroes. Therefore, using hmm. them to judge Goku's abilities is pointless. Besides, the Daisenshu says that Die, what now? the official Dragon Ball Encyclopedia. It states power levels eventually become immeasurable. Not because they are so high they can't be measured, but because the characters, and hopefully the audience, have realized just how futile these numbers are. I'm still ten times hmm. stronger than you are. That may be true, but strength isn't the only thing that matters. We cannot judge Goku by his power level, nor can we through power scaling, the theory that he can achieve the same feats as lesser Dragon Ball characters. Goku's abilities are tailored to his personal training and experiences, not to mention anatomy. I can read the space you get. However, Goku does have a knack for mimicking key techniques. 
He is metaphysical, made up of things such as vigor, courage, and being in one's true mind. It's basically a kind of natural life force energy and is a fundamental component of Taoist medicine and martial arts. Oh, and uh, it's not magic. Dragon Ball creates a very distinct difference between Ki and magic. Ki is dependent on the physical ability of the user, and magic users like Bobbity are clearly using something different. Goku harnesses and manipulates his Ki energy into badass lasers and stuff like Ki blasts, energy barriers, and the Destructo Disc, which he totally Destructo stole. Disc. The Solar Flare blinds opponents, and the Spirit Bomb puts energy from other things into a giant death ball that takes freaking forever to make. And energy taken from sentient beings must be voluntary. The spirit bomb is fueled by positive energy, which is only effective against those filled with negative energy, aka evil. In the Super Android so film, work against film Superman. Goku actually absorbs the key gathered from the spirit bomb, becoming one with it, transforming and manipulating the energy himself. But his two best moves are the Dragon Fist, where he supercharges his punch with a golden key dragon, and the one and only Kamehameha, a giant focus beam which Turtle every kid wave. in the world has <laughs> always wanted to do. Don't lie, you've tried it. Goku also uses Ki for telekinesis and high-speed flight. He can even sense the power and location of other Ki sources, then teleport directly to them with instant transmission. Which is light speed! You dematerialize and travel as a mass of light! Again, false! This is another mistake in translation. According to the original manga, instant transmission is, well, instant. Its only flaw is that it requires concentrated focus. Ah, it's not good! I can't concentrate! Also, hmm. he can Super, Wait, what? Is there no limit to this key thing? There is. Goku draws from a finite pool of key energy. So to increase his power, Goku perfected the art of Kaioken. This amplifies Goku's key, multiplying his strength, speed, defense, and so on. Too much strength one problem. Fail. It puts a giant strain on his body and could even kill him. Kaioken times 20! But Goku does not have to rely solely on his key. He wields the Power Pole, a magical staff which expands and contracts. When he's hurt, eating a sensu bean heals him up. And to get around, he rides the Flying Nimbus, a flying cloud which probably tastes like cotton candy. <laughs> Still, the Kaioken was Goku's trump card for some time until a fateful battle with the tyrant Frieza, who pushed Goku past his limits to achieve the legendary form of Super Saiyan. There are four different levels of Super Saiyan, each drastically boosting his power. Like the Kaioken, each form does burden his body, though Goku has trained to minimize this. Super Saiyan 3 multiplies the already combined power of Super Saiyan 2 by 4, but comes at a horrible price. That hair. <laughs> oh, and it pretty much destroys his body while he's using it, but my god, the hair! <laughs> Fortunately for Goku, the life-sapping Super Saiyan 3 form would be trumped by his final transformation, Super Saiyan 4. This form alters his body to better endure the 4,000 times power increase. Complete with pink fur and eyeshadow! <laughs> Fear the ultimate form! With each transformation, minus full power Super Saiyan 1, Goku loses some self-control, becoming more violent and instinct prone. When I'm at this power level, it's hard for me to listen to reason. I just lose control. Seems pretty dangerous. Goku's greatest mm -hmm. strength is his tenacity and never give up attitude. He does not fight to defeat others, he fights to defeat himself. Hmm. However, this may also be his greatest weakness. He prefers a fair fight, eager to see his opponent's maximum potential. He's about to reach his maximum! This could be your last chance! I want him to reach his maximum. I want to fight him when he's at his best. But when the whole world is at stake, well, hindsight is 2020. And although he's more than tough enough to survive in a vacuum, he clearly needs oxygen, so no breathing in space. Plus, well, mm -hmm. Goku's not very bright. Despite some basic schooling from Roshi, Goku has never had a day of certified formal education in his life. It took him years just to learn how to drive. But why the hell would Goku need to drive a car? Even so, Goku understands his weaknesses. To him, a formal education would just be a waste of time. He is already a genius when it comes to martial arts. And even if he doesn't get the hell beaten out of him, he improves with every fight. And that is what Goku is all about. He thrives on becoming stronger and bursting limits, and has overcome every obstacle in his way. Even marriage. Goku <laughs> might just be the greatest martial artist in fictional history. What? What are you? I am the hope of the universe! I am the answer to all living things that cry out for peace. Ally to good! Nightmare to you! My son was in the bus. He 
saw what Clark did. Cal-El was born to a high-class scientist on the planet Krypton. He narrowly escaped the destruction of his home world when his father sent him to Earth with the goal of preserving human life. Well, what a coincidence! It was ever the whole saving human life thing. After <laughs> landing on Earth, he was found and raised by the Kents, who decided to name him Clark. And weren't they surprised when they found out he was an alien with superpowers? After discovering his true heritage, Clark refused to accept his Kryptonian side. He subconsciously developed mental barriers that blocked him from attaining his full power which he would work to uncover throughout the rest of his life. Stupid power-limiting brain! After graduating college in two years and traveling the world as a secret superhero, Clark moved to the city of Metropolis as an investigative report and donned the red and blue to publicly announce his presence as the Superman, defender of truth, justice, and the American way, until he renounced his American citizenship. Mild-mannered Clark <laughs> kept his identity a secret with the brilliant disguise of nerdy glasses and goofy <laughs> demeanor. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Proving that people only see what they want to believe. Boomstick, that's surprisingly profound. <clears throat> Since then, his power's been pretty inconsistent, mostly due to the writers doing whatever the hell they please. Well, there <laughs> is a legitimate explanation. Superman's powers are dependent on the ultrasolar rays of the sun. By absorbing yellow or blue sunlight, his power rises. However, he cannot absorb sunlight from a red star. So, if you take away a yellow sun, you slowly take away Superman's powers. He's solar powered! They call him the world's first superhero, but sounds more like the world's first hippie to me. Now, the intensity of solar radiation disperses the further away it gets from its source. So, the closer Superman is to the sun, the more solar radiation he'll absorb. So, he gathers more power the higher he gets? He is a hippie! In the Justice League series, Our World's at War, Superman actually spent 15 minutes inside the sun. When he resurfaced, he was powerful enough to effortlessly move planets. He can also hear sounds millions of miles away, see through anything but lead, and spot things moving Data faster vision can see light. a person's he aura. He can see at a subatomic level hmm. and hear through the vacuum of space. Somehow. He can even see your soul. What? It happened. Well, weird abilities aside, Superman can freeze his enemies in ice or create hurricanes just by breathing. And to top it all off, he shoots laser beams from his eyes. His heat vision can be expanded to encompass anything within Superman's sight and reach temperatures hotter than the sun. He can incinerate entire planets in a staring contest. However, heat vision does drain his solar power much faster than any other ability, especially when he amps it up. And with precision, heat vision can reach microscopic levels invisible to the human eye. Heat vision. Focus through your pupils like a scalpel. Instant lobotomy. Superman can vibrate his body fast enough to phase through attacks, even turn invisible. By vibrating to just under light speed, Superman can use the infinite mass punch. The speed causes the relative mass of his fist to increase immensely and hits with the force of a supernova. Which explodes at a force of 10 octillion megatons! Thanks, back to the day calendar! In comparison, this is the Tsar, the most powerful bomb mankind has ever tested. 50 megatons. So that punch is like 200 septillion super nukes. That's 24 zeros, bitches. Superman is not only strong, but a genius with a super brain that can process information thousands of times faster than an average human. He is capable of strategic fighting even while traveling eight times the speed of light. So he's got the he's an too. expert in disabling opponents through pressure void combat, and once fought demons in Valhalla alongside Wonder Woman and Thor for 1,000 freaking years. He's even learned how to protect his mind from telepathic attacks. I heard your telepathic shout before, but my mind is protected from anything deeper by a series of psychic blocks. Best I've seen, too. He also studied two Kryptonian martial arts, Torquasm Rao and Torquasm Vo. Orgasm what now? Torquasm Rao is a hard martial art in which Superman enters the Theta State, a real-life phenomenon in which a person becomes extremely receptive to information and instinct. Torquasm Vo is a mental martial art, with which Superman can fight off mind domination and illusions, or even counterattack. In order to master all his power, Superman needed to break through his own self-created mental blocks. Like how when he was younger, he believed he needed to eat food and breathe oxygen like humans. When he could really just survive on solar energy alone, like some weird plant man. And thanks to some intense training from Mongol II, he managed to tear these barriers down and become the true Superman. 
capable of amazing feats. Yeah, like when he obliterated an F5 tornado with a round of applause, or when he was the filling for a planet sandwich, or held a mini black hole in his hand. Oh, or the time he dragged the freaking Earth around. Superman has survived uh, music. some pretty crazy things. Like when Cold Gas hit him with 15 supernovas to the face. That was like 15 suns exploding in his face. I just said that. Exaggeration? Maybe, but he has survived other supernovas before. When he takes a hit, his super dense molecular structure and bioelectric aura protects him and his suit. Holy crap, he sounds invincible! Not exactly. His solar energy can be depleted over the course of a battle if he takes too much damage or remains out of sunlight for too long. This is how the monster Doomsday was able to kill him. Oh, sorry, not kill, put him into a healing coma. <laughs> he also has several specific weaknesses, like the famous kryptonite, radioactive fragments of his home world which bring him to his knees. Any prolonged exposure will eventually kill him. He also has no special resistance to magical attacks. And he always gets all hung up on doing the right thing, even if it makes his life miserable. He does not fight for himself, but to protect others. Even the buildings in Metropolis are more valuable to him than his own life. Than fighting for themselves. Most of the time. Point is, Superman spends more time defending the city than actually improving his own abilities. But remove all those pesky feelings about saving people and look out! I feel like I live in a world made of cardboard, always taking constant care not to break something, to break someone. What we have here is a rare opportunity for me to cut loose <laughs> and show you just how powerful I really am. Nice. All right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. So I feel like I have a couple of questions that I need to ask before we can start. Like, where are they fighting? Because if it's day or night, or yeah. close to a sun, that impacts the outcome. I'm gonna go with Superman for one real fundamental thing. Education and intelligence. If Goku was like Batman, mm -hmm. and I believed that he would go out, and he would find the kryptonite, and he would prepare for this battle, and he would read up on Superman, and like all this yeah, stuff, yeah. I'd be like, I really don't know, maybe Goku. But... To me, it's going to come down to that. Goku doesn't have magic. They said that. They said specifically it's not magic. His, uh, his, his chi is not magic or ki. Because they had pointed out that that could hurt Superman, but mm -hmm. they, he has no access to that. Um, also, Superman can like read people's aura. I feel like that's going to come in, in, into play somewhere. Goku also doesn't like to... Like, I mean, even if he knew about the Kryptonite, he wouldn't use it because he doesn't want to fight people when they're weakest. He wants to fight people when they're strongest. So... He's not going to use the advantage of like sucking Superman's energy or whatever out or like battling him away from the sun. Like in like the best place to battle him would be as close to the sun as possible. And Goku can't like needs oxygen. So I think so that was enough. Goku's hubris is going to be his downfall. Yeah, that's another thing that I think that is going to is is going to hurt him. In the end, I think it's going to be Superman because I think also you know the the intelligence factor is going to is going to factor in as well. They kind of they kind of made a big deal of that with Goku and Superman. So. Well, also, I think the other thing that um, Kryptonian, like, martial arts that they yeah. said, which I can't remember the specific words of, but one of them was specifically to gather, basically, information about the surroundings, mm -hmm. like, at super speed. Yeah. Plus reflexes and reactions. Yep. And so I'm like, okay, well, if, if it's, like, superpowers versus superpowers, then he's got that one advantage if it came down to, like, yeah. those two things canceling them out. Okay, he can react faster and whatnot. True. Time for a death battle! Ooh, it's a long death battle, too. It's like, I got another, like, 15 minutes. So this stuff pretty evenly managed in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. It's gonna kill us! <laughs> <laughs> from disaster once again. The man of tomorrow saved a downed airliner which would have crashed into Superman, huh? Wow, he looks really smart. I think I'll all start for this one. that pretty boy ass cloud. Please, I could kill him with my eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> that stupid transforming hedgehog. Just look at him, wearing his underwear on the outside. <laughs> Don't be so sure. Hmm? I sense him. He's strong. Stronger than anyone I've ever fought. 
Are you serious? Finally, someone as strong as me. Coming. Hey there. Uh, hello. You look pretty strong. Let's fight. <laughs> fight? Well, that's really what I do. Oh boy, this is gonna be fun. You're insane. <laughs> <laughs> Reach the Super Saiyan 4 ability or whatever. Come on, Clark. Ooh. Yeah. What? I, I, I can't move. So, you're an alien too. The pressure huh? points. What did you do to me? Hmm. Pressure points. Didn't work at first, but my x-ray and microscopic vision let me find your body's weak points. You won't be going anywhere. What is that? Ah, Sensubi. What, what? No. I'm ending this. Now. Yep, here he goes. Changes. <gasps> oh! Ooh. Turtle destruction wave. Oh, By sorry, Lex Luthor. <laughs> well, this might take a while. <laughs> no, 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 no. <gasps> what? Oh, that's enough. That's convenient. Advantage. Guys, beat stick. Is he like spanking him with that thing? <laughs> oh! Hmm. 
teleporting. Solar Flare is going to help him out. My turn. What the hell just happened? I've got a bad feeling about this. He just blocked out the sun. He's blowing up the world. Well, yeah, the sun's gone now. Ultimate form, huh? About time you ran out of hairstyles. Oof. I don't care what blocked out the sun, though. Left me. Mm -hmm. have to get above those clouds. Yeah. Well, you don't. Yo, yeah, you're in space now, dude. If you just blast him in the sun, he's just gonna get more powerful. Uh, that's it. No, it's not. Good. Fight. Wait, he's. There's no way. He's still alive. It's. It's the sun. He's using the sun. But I'm. I'm drained. Sun, lend me your energy. <laughs> with the sun too much? I guess. He becomes a big giant sunball himself. Dragon. You want to blow up the planet? Yeah. Okay. Superman's power. Hmm. And if Goku destroyed the sun, the supernova would blast all the way past Mars and 
and incinerated. So it ultimately comes down to who is stronger, faster, and tougher. The force needed to move an object out of the sun's orbit by 1% is about 1,000 times less than the object's mass. The Earth weighs in just under 6.6 sextillion tons. This means Superman is strong enough to move 6.6 quintillion tons. Damn. But since his solar power can rise infinitely, this is nowhere near his maximum strength. You are lifting 200 quintillion tons. That's three times your record. <laughs> While being timed by Max Lord, Superman flew to the sun and back in less than two minutes. That's 9.4 billion kilometers per hour. Not to mention he was fighting Wonder Stripper the whole time. True. So it's likely he can go faster. According to Batman, he can fly at least 17 billion kilometers per hour. And nobody argued with Batman. <laughs> the Man of Steel can survive the impact of multiple supernovas, each with about 10 octillion megatons of force. So, Superman's feats and skills are definitively measured. However, Goku's are not, and are difficult to judge. Hmm. Not only does Dragon Ball heavily abuse cinematic time, but Goku's final adventures in Dragon Ball GT are incredibly inconsistent due to his untimely transformation into a child. Wow, the room got a lot bigger somehow. As Ki is dependent on the physical body, his child form likely could not handle his own Ki, sending his power into flux. It can't take it! It's too weak! My older body was more developed! And obviously we're not using future Goku, because that would require a ridiculous amount of assumptions. Not to mention we'd have to use future Superman, who is pretty much God! So like Superman, we need to judge Goku in his prime. After experimenting with dozens of different theories, we discovered an ironclad method defining Goku's limits, hmm. which we call the gravity formula, based around his training in increased gravity. Due to his style of training and Saiyan heritage, Goku increases his abilities proportionate to the amount of force he trains under. Saiyans are born with a unique ability to fight anywhere. While in base form, Goku could lift just under 40 tons. This is equivalent to 586 times normal Earth gravity, which we will use... Oh, they did a lot of math on this one. Mm -hmm. ...the same power increases to calculate Goku's maximum potential. Multiplying the 40 tons by the Super Saiyan forms means he can lift up to 160,000 tons in Super Saiyan 4. Strong enough to pick up a continent. Or my ex-wife. <laughs> Not the whole earth. Right after Goku trained on King Kai's planet, which has gravity 10 times stronger than Earth's, he flew across Snake Quay Road as fast as possible to save his friends. It took him 28 hours. Impressive, since that's one million kilometers long. Except it's filled with curves, and Goku flew straight over it. So how far did he actually travel? By comparing Goku's height to a single spike, we can measure each curve. We can then remove those curves from the overall length. So it turns out Goku Good job actually doing this. flew 307,000 kilometers, nearly 11,000 kilometers per hour. To see how fast his base form is by the end of the series, we run the snakeway number through the gravity formula to find that his top speed clocks in at over two and a half billion kilometers per hour, over two times the speed of light. We can determine Goku's durability through this bomb, which the brilliant Dr. Jiro designed to kill Goku at age 25, when his maximum potential was Kaioken times four. That was intended for Goku. It was intended to be a last resort. Scans of the bomb display a TNT measurement of 657. Loma says the bomb could destroy the Earth, so this is likely measured in quadrillion megatons, since it takes at least 53 quadrillion megatons of force to destroy the Earth. So in his final How do we know that? <laughs> he up to nearly 35 sextillion megatons. Goku doesn't rely solely on his physical abilities. He amplifies his strength and durability with Ki. Mm -hmm. But even though his Ki reserve cannot be measured, we can determine his maximum output. See, his Ki attacks do not force him backward unless he allows them to. Even when firing upward at full power, the ground beneath him remains untouched. Therefore, according to physics, his maximum output is at most equal to the amount of force he can withstand. Luckily, we just calculated that with the Zero Bomb. Alright, now that we've determined Goku's maximum potential, what let's compare least? it to Superman. Oh, holy shit! Not even close! Now, we can keep throwing feats and equations around, but in the end, numbers cannot measure what Goku and Superman are capable of. They are both ultimate heroes, solutions to daunting problems, and achievers of the impossible. The difference is at the core of their character. Goku has never been invincible. He has very clear limits and must overcome those limits to solve the problems at hand. That's the whole point. On the other hand, Superman's story interesting. is not about the fight to become the best, but of an immigrant facing the challenge of home versus heritage. 
after accepting his alien side, Superman has reached his full potential, which under the endless power of the sun is essentially limitless. In short, Superman is as strong as he needs to be. So what happens when you pit a man with the power to break any limits against another who has no limits in the first place? Well, only one has limits to give at all. Goku just kind of can't keep up with a man of steel. Yeah. The winner is Superman. So clearly they uh, decided to do it again, though, because there's a I see Goku versus Superman 2 death battle. Which is interesting because the thumbnail for that one looks like Superman from Injustice, which in that he goes evil. Okay. And Goku did have that positive bomb that yeah. is, you know, if you're negative, if you're evil, is specifically designed for you and Superman does go evil. So that could be an interesting matchup. That, uh, well done. <laughs> Way to point that out. All right. What do you think about this? So we finally learned more about us uh, from Dragon Ball. So it's, yeah. Uh, I don't want to say Super Saiyan, but Super Saiyan? Saiyan, I think. Super, Super I think. Saiyan. Uh, we learned about that ability, and, I mean, it is just wild. I mean, even, like, as they were talking about it, it was just... I still don't really know enough to kind of wrap my mind around it. I feel the same way, but I will say, for, for them, like, hats off to them. Because we've seen some other death battles, and, yeah. and they've been fun, but kind of, like purely entertainment where it's mm -hmm. you know it's, this is what we think would happen and here's why with this they they did their research they like pulled out the chalkboard and did all the math equations and everything else which yeah. i have to imagine is from how much people wanted to see this death battle in this matchup because not only did they do a great job with the fight but they then took so much time to justify how yeah. they came to their conclusion afterwards and and i have mad respect for that agreed i mean just yeah, all the calculations is uh, is mind blowing that they, they were able to take the time to do all that. I wonder how long it took them to kind of like put this all together. They obviously had a lot of help from uh, different um, websites, and yep. that's cool. They they consulted other people, and whether you agree with it or not, they obviously put in a ton of care into yeah. this one. We watched the Deadpool and Deathstroke one, and Deadpool made fun of them for this one, saying it was like super super one sided fanboy thing. So you know, it was always going to be Superman. Um, and like when they were setting it up, it did seem like you know Superman was set up to. To win this, we were talking about like the different strengths and everything like that. I can't say what they did or didn't leave out as far as uh, Goku's powers or whatever, because you know we don't, we are just learning about him really pretty, pretty much for the first time. I especially love that they put the the kryptonite in there because even though we yeah. had talked about that beforehand and said how he wouldn't want to fight Superman unless he was at his strongest, when that came about, I, I mean we both had that like, oh come on, like yeah, how convenient, like are you <laughs> so I I love that even with the setup they they presented it so well that they mm -hmm. still got that reaction out of us. I mean, they, they still had us hooked into it moment to moment. Well, and I was wearing the same thing too. I'm like, okay, now they've blocked out the sun, and so Goku's going to win because the sun's not yeah. no longer there, but then Superman was able to get to, to, to the sun and, like, you know, recharge and refresh. But, yeah, I mean, Superman does seem kind of, like, un unbeatable, and that's kind of one of the reasons I've never really read the co Superman comic books or, like, really got super into them. Like, I liked the Superman movies, Christopher Reeve's movies, uh, you, you know, they're, they're, they're cheesy and they're hokey, but, like, I still enjoyed them. Like, yeah, it's a um, good kind of cheese. The part about Superman that I was always drawn to was the fact that here is someone who is so all-powerful, who is essentially limitless, mm -hmm. and yet the simplest little thing, the simplest shard, the tiniest shard of kryptonite can bring him down completely. And so it was that thing of having this enormous amount of power and, and ability and yet... A crippling weakness. A crippling weakness that can turn him so incredibly vulnerable in, in so little time and totally change the tide of a otherwise very winnable battle. So let us know what you thought about this death battle down below in the comments, and uh, we'll have to check out uh, the sequel to this one. Um, it won't be next, but we will eventually get to that one as well. And uh, some more uh, death battles for us to react to, and some more ideas for Fight Night. We're not going to just do yeah. be death battles. Like, there are other things that could be for Fight Night. Maybe we'll do some epic rap battles of history on Fight Night, uh, you know, or some princess rap battles, another one that <laughs> I've seen. So yeah, just more suggestions for uh, things to do on Fight Night on this channel. And make sure to check out our other channel, Definitely Not Definitive Games, for Fight Night over there, and our Instagram, at We Are Definitely Not Definitive. Link is in the description of this video, along with a playlist for all of our death battle reactions. And after all that. <laughs> after all after all that. <laughs> thanks so much for checking out our reaction for uh, Goku versus Superman death battle, but just keep in mind. That our reaction is definitely not definitive. <laughs>